Have you ever felt the forest staring back at you? Not the rustling leaves or the nocturnal sounds, but a presence, an unseen entity that breathes with the trees and whispers through the shadows. I've spent decades patrolling these woods as a park ranger, a witness to nature's beauty and brutality. But what I encountered out there, lurking beneath the canopy, made me question everything I thought I knew. It was late October, the trees were adorned in hues of crimson and gold, and the air held a biting chill. I received a distress call from a group of hikers who claimed they were lost in the woods. My gut told me something was off, a primal instinct that stirred unease within me. Ignoring protocol, I ventured alone into the maze of ancient trees, their twisted branches casting elongated shadows. As I navigated the labyrinthine trails, the silence became suffocating. No bird calls, no rustling leaves, just an eerie hush that clung to the air. I felt as though the forest was holding its breath, waiting for something. I pushed forward, my senses on high alert, my hand resting on the grip of my revolver. That's when I saw her. A woman, standing in the middle of the trail, her long hair obscuring her face. She was dressed in a flowing white gown that seemed to glow in the dim light filtering through the trees but there was something about her that made my skin crawl. Ma'am, are you lost? I called out, my voice echoing through the forest. No answer. I took a few cautious steps forward, my heart pounding against my chest. The woman remained still, her face still obscured by her hair. As I got closer, I could see that her skin was deathly pale, almost translucent. Ma'am, I'm a park ranger. Are you okay? Suddenly, the woman's head snapped up, her hair falling away from her face. Her eyes were black as coal, and her lips twisted into a sinister smile. I gasped, taking a step back as she started to move towards me with an inhuman grace. I raised my gun, but I knew it would be useless against this otherworldly creature. The woman stopped, still grinning wickedly. You shouldn't have come here, she hissed, her voice laced with a hint of amusement. This forest belongs to us now. Us? The word echoed through my mind, sending shivers down my spine. I had heard stories of supernatural beings inhabiting the woods, but I never believed them. Until now. I watched in horror as the woman transformed before my very eyes. Her skin rippled, bones cracking as she grew taller and her limbs elongated. Wings unfurled from her back, translucent and iridescent like those of a dragonfly. Her eyes glowed with an otherworldly light, and her mouth stretched impossibly wide to reveal rows of glistening, razor-sharp teeth. I stumbled backwards, tripping over a tree root and hitting the ground hard. The creature loomed over me as she regarded me with soulless black eyes. Before I could react, she lunged at me, her teeth sinking into my shoulder. I screamed, unable to comprehend the pain that tore through me. She pulled away, blood dripping from her jaws as she laughed, a sound that echoed through the forest like a death knell. I collapsed in shock, clutching my wound and rolling to my side. I searched frantically, but I was alone again, thankfully. Or not. I tried to radio for help and got nothing but static. My heart dropped as I realized I was going to die out here, alone and forgotten. Just another casualty in this godforsaken forest. My attacker's laughter echoed through the trees around me. That's when I realized I was still losing blood, and fast. The pain was slowly subsiding, my body weakening with each passing moment. Even if I wanted to get up and run, I wouldn't make it far. I was about to close my eyes for the last time when I heard a sound in the distance. It was faint, but unmistakable. A child's laughter. I turned my head, and through the haze, I could see a little boy standing in the middle of the trail, perhaps a hundred feet away. He looked to be about eight years old, with messy brown hair and a tattered shirt. He stared at me with eyes the color of the sky, and I recognized him instantly. My own son, who had died in a car accident years ago. Chris, I whispered, is that really you? I felt a spark of hope ignite in my chest. Do you know the way out of here? I asked frantically. The boy just stared back at me from the safety of the tree line, 
those same pools of unnatural darkness where his eyes should have been. Why did you kill me, Daddy? The boy's voice reverberated as though he were whispering directly into my ear. I froze, my mind reeling as I tried to process what was happening. What are you talking about? I asked the boy, my voice trembling. You heard me. You killed me in the car accident, remember? I told you not to drink and drive, but you did it anyway. You shouldn't have done that, Daddy. You promised you wouldn't leave me. The boy's voice was tinged with anger, the same way mine would be if I were scolding him. I remembered that night all too clearly. I had been a little tipsy, but I could still drive. But in my inebriated state, I made a stupid decision. To drive over the speed limit. A decision I would have never made if my son hadn't been with me. A decision that cost him his life. You killed me, Daddy. Now we're both trapped here in this forest and we will never get out. I awoke in the hospital, apparently for the second time. The doctors said I had to be restrained and sedated the first time because I woke up crying, screaming my son's name over and over. I tried to make sense of what happened. By the time my colleagues found me near the trail, I'd nearly bled out. It was a miracle I survived, but I couldn't forget the words my son said to me, even now, all these years later. Despite my injuries, and regardless of the knowledge it couldn't really have been him, I'm going back there tonight. If I could just see him, maybe talk to him one more time, it will be worth it, no matter what happens to me.